Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to get into our preview of the Buffalo Bills versus the Baltimore Ravens. Now, first of all, welcome back. And I got some notes right here in front of me that I'm going to go through in this video. I'm really just going to talk about some different things that I've seen while watching the Buffalo Bills, and they're 3-0. And we always say, you are what your record says you are. They're one of the better teams in the uh, NFL right now. They're ranked extremely high. In my power rankings, if you had a chance to check that out, if I'm not mistaken, they're around number three in those power rankings. But let's kind of get into the, the nuts and bolts of, of what the Buffalo Bills have, who they have, and where they're ranked in different aspects of their football team. Welcome back to Zip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Avis. Let's get started. All right, appreciate you guys for coming back. And um, before we get into this, go ahead and like the video. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop throughout the 2024 season. And let's get into the nuts and bolts of the Buffalo Bills. We're going to start with the head of the snake, and that's Josh Allen. Talking a little bit about Josh Allen, and um, since the changing of offensive coordinators last year, he's been a different quarterback. Hasn't turned it over as much. Uh, they don't throw it around as much. They got rid of Diggs, so that really isn't – getting Diggs the ball isn't really an issue that they have to worry about anymore. And right now he's 16th in passing yards with seven touchdowns. And no interceptions. None. Zero. Zilch. Unless I unless I got my stats and my facts um, wrong. Hadn't thrown an interception yet. First in passer rating, 133.7, which is amazing for him. Second in completion percentage, 75%. He's only been sacked two times this year, which is amazing. We're heading into game four. He's only been sacked twice. We got some work to do up front. Josh, Josh Allen poses a big, big problem to our Baltimore Ravens. Let's talk a little bit about James Cook. James Cook has been the beneficiary of the new philosophy in Buffalo. Uh, this year, he's 19 in rushing, 188 yards, 4.6 yards per carry. Now, the yards, they mean a lot, but they don't mean a lot. That yards per carry is what it is tough. 4.6, and they also use him to catch the ball out the backfield. If I'm not mistaken, we'll talk about the leading receiver in a little bit. The second leading receiver is a tight end, but that third leading receiver is James Cook. So he's catching the ball and running the ball for them. So we definitely got to keep an eye on James Cook and how they use him. He's always in motion, whether it's the yo-yo motion at the backfield where they – widen him out and bring him right back just to see what the linebacker's going to do. Or if they put him, take him to the line of scrimmage and veer him out to make it look like he's a slot receiver. He's always, always in motion trying to get information for Josh Allen at the quarterback position. As a team, the Bills offense, 329 yards per game. That's 13 in the NFL. Um, passing yards, they allow, I'm sorry, they pass for 209 passing yards a game, which don't seem like a lot. It's 14, but they're efficient. They're extremely efficient, and they also rush for 120 yards per game, which is extremely efficient. And with them rushing the ball, it's Josh Allen, it's um, James Cook, also Ray Davis, the rookie from Kentucky. We'll mention him a little bit here in a little bit. But defensively, they're eighth in yards per game, and they're sneakily, sneakily, I just made that word up again. You know I'm always making words up. Sneakily good on defense. Eighth in yards per game with 286. Eighth in passing yards per game with 168. And then there's 16 in rushing yards per game, which is where I think we can get them. And y'all know how we feel about us running the ball. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, their best receiver, Khalil Shakur. That's a huge difference from Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs, Khalil Shakur. But the thing is with Khalil Shakur, he's had 14 targets. Caught off 14 of them, 168 yards, two TDs. 
and they use them in a bunch of different ways. Quick screens is the most way, where they'll Josh will catch the ball and throw it out there to him. Yeah, he can run routes. Yeah, he do stuff down the field. But that quick screen stuff is one of the reasons why 14 targets, 14 receptions. Uh, talk about insights, and you can find insights, you know, out there, out and about. Uh, we all got access to it, but some of the, the most interesting ones that I found was Josh Allen has completed 23 of 26 passes to the slot receivers for 241 yards and four TDs. Shakir's in that slot a lot. That's one of the reasons why he's the number one guy for them. Shakir, the uh, tight ends, and they sometimes slide Cook out there as well. So we got to worry about that. That's his biggest target thrown to those slot receivers. But I also dropped a stat on on Twitter yesterday when I charted his runs, Josh Allen runs. Josh Allen's most effective runs have been when pass plays are called and not the not the drop back and I'm looking for stuff and scramble. Drop back and I instantly see a weakness in the defense and take off right now. So he'll be like, he'll look around the defense. The ball snapped and he instantly take off running because he found a bubble. Those have been his most effective scrambles. Um, so far this year when he sees a, a weakness or a gap in your defense he just catch the ball and go everybody else still running the pass play but he gone um, another insight team's not getting pressure on him he's only been pressured in 23.8% of his dropbacks we've been rushing four a lot hadn't been getting home as much as we want even though you know Calvin Oy has four sacks we're getting some pressure from Ojabo, some pressure from Owe, uh, getting some push up the middle from Travis Jones. We need to get home more, but we don't need the blitz to get home more because if we blitz Josh and don't get there, he's going to burn us up. Those four that we rush are going to have to get home. O Owe, Ojabo, Vanoy, Travis Jones, Pierce, all those guys, gotta, they got to get home. If not, it's going to be a long night. Gonna be a long night. And I could, you can throw a, a, a stunt in every now and then with a linebacker, but a consistent blitz package because he's tough to tackle. And y'all know how we are with tackling sometimes. We don't, we don't like to, to get him on the ground. And he's one of the probably the hardest quarterbacks to tackle besides Lamar. So keep that in mind. Defensively, Christian Benford. Talk about this guy a little bit. He was drafted in the same draft as the, the second coming of Elam from Florida. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Benford was drafted in sixth or seventh round. Um, wasn't expected to play that much, but won that job over Elam. And has gotten better and better each year. If I'm not mistaken, this is his third, maybe fourth year. Uh, he's only allowed two and a half yards per target. The fewest among uh, 73 cornerbacks that have faced 10 targets. The kid is really good. Really, really good. Now, they've moved on from other cornerbacks. He's their number one cornerback. Now, can he slow down Zay? I think he's better versus bigger wide receivers. I think Zay is a little bit too twitchy for him. But will he even be on Zay? I don't know. I think he's more of a guy that can get over there on Bateman and, you know, kind of do what he needs to do with Bateman. But Bateman can win some routes on him. He ain't the lockdown guy that, you know, the top – he ain't one of those top NFL cornerbacks. But I think we can, can get some stuff on him. Let me go to my second page. My second page is talking about their one-two punch in the backfield. And it's James Cook and Ray Davis. Uh, Ray Davis has forced missed tackles on 59.1% of his targets. I'm sorry, of his touches. And James Cook has an average of 4.7 yards per carry versus a loaded box. And loaded box is seven guys in the box. Seven. I made sure I did the research on that. Seven guys in the box. James Cook still getting... Four and a half yards per carry. Well, 4.7 yards per carry, which is crazy. Extremely crazy. All right, now looking at PFF numbers, and with this chart, I'm going to try to throw it up on the screen too and post. Um, when you put the Bills' offense versus the Ravens' defense, I think the Ravens' edge defenders have an advantage. When you look at advantage versus their tackles, when you look at Owe, Ojabo, um, Van Oy versus the guys they have at tackle and that's uh, Dawkins and, and Brown we should win that matchup consistently all night long not saying we're going to win every rep but we should win that matchup all night long we should be able to get pressure on Josh Allen and, and force him off his spot 
I'm saying forcing him off his spot is a good thing because he can run and do things with his arm after the after he gets forced off his spot. But we should win those matchups definitely. On the interior, they have a guy that I feel like we should dominate the whole game. That's Osiris Torrance, uh, second year guy from Florida. Matter BK, Travis Jones, Michael Pierce should dominate that young fella all game long. Like when I had Vach on last week and they were saying that they find the the sucky player. He, he used a different term, but find the sucky player. I think Osiris should be the guy we should pick on on that front, uh, on that offensive line. Just like first week it should have been the rookie, Sadam Next week it should have been um, who played week two. Mm, can't remember who it was week two. Last week it should have been the the two uh, rookie tackles, the tackle in the center for Dallas. But you always find the weakest old lineman and go dominate. But we have enough guys up front that we should be able to do that every week and find the weak guy, put some of our best guys there, whether it be edge or interior, and dominate. But we got to do it and not just have that be a thought. All right? So flip on the flip side of that, defensively, we should also win their the battle versus their DBs too. I think we have the better set of wide receivers versus their DBs. When you put all of them in the, in the hat together, uh, even though I mentioned Benford earlier, but when you think of Benford and the other guys, when you think of Bateman, uh, Zay, um, Likely, I think we have the better skill guys. And I'm not talking about running back and, and quarterback. I'm talking about receiver, safety, tight end, DB. And even though they got a good set, two good tight ends, but we're talking about defensively for them right now. All right? But I will say this. Even with all that said, and I think we have all these different advantages defensively, Josh Allen is the X factor. Extending players with his feet, and that means running the ball when nothing's open or extending plays outside the pocket and then throwing the ball down the field because he can throw the ball 50, 60, 70 yards on the whim. Has one of the strongest arms in the NFL. So just because we get him out of the pocket don't mean to play dead. The DB's got to get extra sticky and make sure – that they don't allow scramble drill to go deep. Like when they just own a guy, he just turn up field because Josh didn't get it there to him. All right? For us, I think when we go on offense, I still think the Bills have advantage with <laughs> their edge guys versus our tackles. So I think both teams have an advantage defensively with the edge guys. And they have Russo and um, Von Miller versus Ronnie and McCarvey and Rosengarten for us. Now, I know Voorhees hadn't – practice and probably won't play and there's word that McCarr may move inside so I don't know if he's still going to be a tackle. We may even see a Ben Cleveland sighting but who knows but I doubt it. I I think they'll pull somebody off the street to play offensive line before they let Ben Cleveland out there but that's just my two cents. <laughs> but uh, I think they had the advantage at edge but inside I think we can do work. If we can move Ed Oliver we can run zone stuff. And I think we have a huge advantage with Lamar, Derrick Henry back there, Tyler Linderbaum, and running zone stuff, whether it be outside zone or inside zone. But I still think we need more play action. Didn't have enough play action um, last last week. And I meant to write that in my notes, but I forgot the percentage of play action we had. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was nine. When I was on um, 410 Sports, they had a stat up. I think we only ran 9% of our passes or on the season, 9% of our passes have been play action. And with that combination of Lamar and Derrick Henry back there, that's a travesty. We should have way more than that, way more than that. But if we can move Ed Oliver, we should be able to run the ball. No stalemates. I mean move. Now, for my overall thing, they're 3-0. and We're 1-2. and two. And I, you are what your record says you are. But I'm going to go against it. I think we're a better team than 1-2. and two. We've just pissed down our leg some 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 opportunities. But I think we put it pull it together and go out and have a great showing Sunday night. And we find a way to beat the um Buffalo Bills. I think we run the ball. I think we control the clock. And I think we frustrate them by staying on the field a lot. And don't give the don't put the defense in a situation where they have to defend holding a lead. Offensively go out there and slam the door. Now if they the defense do have to hold the lead. It's about time they do that. Uh, you know, I'm off, I'm off the the train where offense need to uh, – well, offense do need to do their part, but I'm off that train with giving defensive excuses. You, you won't hear that from me anymore. And, you know, people have been calling me out on it, and I accept it. I accept it. No more excuses for the groceries. They got all the 
players, all the money's over there, do their damn job. But I still think we're going to win this game uh, Sunday night. So I appreciate y'all for coming out. Could have been anywhere in the world. We'll be back in the studio soon. But it's nice to get outside and touch a little grass, even under the circumstances. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all soon. Y'all know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Peace.